Woohoo! Wasn't that fantastic, ladies and gentlemen? Please welcome the man of the hour, Mr. Robert Shields. They're going to bring some chairs over. Come on over. And please welcome the extraordinary filmmakers, Mark and Christine Bond. And, and dude, come on out. They're, bringing the, yep, they, they're going to bring the chairs out for you. Now, while, while you're standing, while you're standing and dealing with your emotions for a bit, I'll let you catch your breath because as an anniversary gift to Paul Lennon, who ended up on the cutting room floor. Guys, if you'll just dim the lights a little bit, let's run that clip on Paul Lennon. This was shot in Sedona at their home on Sandstone. And they had a few of nature's glitches. And I am what I like to think of as a good friend of Robert Shields. And we love to have breakfast together, and we sit there and lie to each other about our great accomplishments. <laughs> One morning at our breakfast, uh, I asked Robert, I said, have you and, and Lorraine ever thought about getting back together? They had both remarried. Hold on, what's that? What? Oh, that's, what? A, that's a raven. <laughs> that's a raven. Yeah, they're, they're circling. Those are buzzards. They're circling us. Apparently, we're not moving quick enough. <laughs> They say that old white haired guy is just sitting still, he must be dead. I have someone to be out there. Okay, sorry about that. And the little interesting things of shooting outside. I think they're gone. Yeah, it's really quiet out here. <laughs> I tell you, roll. Please. Uh, because uh, the corporate engagements are, are now non existent for performers. Okay, don't hold us up for a second. Helicopters. Helicopters. Oh, no, it's a biplane. Oh, ah. another one. We're rolling again. Okay, with that, a lot of times when Robert and I meet somewhere, I always save a joke for him. Yeah, I have them right, right here about mines. Uh, <laughs> I, I figured that something was going to happen. <laughs> Just looking off into the... Yeah, you can just look where Chris was kind of sitting. Well, holy moly, look at that. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Right? <laughs> yeah. It didn't even hit me. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my Lord. Oh, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> oh, oh, that's I think we're getting some wind. You should never say children should be seen and not heard because there are enough minds out there. I saw Street Mind the other day, and he was pretending to be in a box, so I pretended to put ten bucks into his can. Is there anything you have to say to Robert? He's such a sweetheart, uh, and maybe he doesn't even realize this. Actually, I have never paid for a piece of Robert's artwork, because he's so giving, he will show up and just say, here, here's something I made for you. <laughs> and so, all over the house we have Robert Shields' artwork. And, and have never paid a dime for it, you know, and when he hears me say that, he'll probably go, oh my gosh, I goofed again, you know. <laughs> right. So there you go, Paul. From cutting room floor to world premiere, Paul and ladies and gentlemen, happy anniversary. Come on in, guys, let's, let's start this, this Q&A. Robert Shields. Chris, again, you get it. Christine Bond, Mark Bond, and Dude. We're going to start, we're going to have a few questions now, and then we're going to pull in Tony Orlando on the Zoom. Um, so I'm going to come down there with the microphone. If you've got a question, raise your hand. Uh, but I have, a, I have a question. I just really, really thank you all for coming. I really want to thank you, sweet Sedona people. Thank you all for coming. 
said he was going to put in a big theater, and I thought, oh no, I mean, <laughs> I mean, people don't like mine, and they don't like me, and oh, thanks, God. Thank you so much, gosh. And these guys, I got to tell you, I, I can't believe what a phenomenal job you did, and the dedication of the hours. It's, it's their film, and they had to hire licensing attorneys and copyright attorneys. No, I'm just saying that the, the work that's involved with it, as you probably know, because it's a film festival, but unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Oh, gosh. I'm going to fire the first question, because Margaret is right, here, right down here. Um, I love the story on how you came to do this film. So will you just will you share that on how this all transpired like 10 years ago? So we at every uh, Memorial Day and Labor Day there's a art fair in Hermosa Beach. And we always go down and look at art and stuff. Hermosa is where we live. By yeah, way. which is in California. And so we run across this booth of beautiful art and I we, we both looking at it I'm like, "Oh, this is really beautiful." And I didn't know who we were. Recording in progress. <laughs> so we're talking away and blah blah blah. And then Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. I, I am a pro, except for what, <laughs> after seeing that with Paul, maybe not. <laughs> so what happened was, is that, you know, uh, we told Robert what we did as far as making documentaries and stuff like that. And he, got, he told us, you should check out Sedona and you should go to the Sedona Film Festival. Enter there. And we thought, why not? You know, so we did. And we brought Wings of Silver, the Vi Cowden story here, and that was in uh, 2011. I don't know if anyone saw it, but it won an Audience Choice Award, and we were thrilled. Your audiences are just amazing, so thank you. So we see Robert again Memorial Day, and be like, hey man, thank you very much. I, you know, we, we love Sedona, we love your, your input. You know, If you ever think of maybe doing, and I don't even finish, and he goes, yes, I want you to do my story. And it was, that's how we started. Yeah. <laughs> Robert, I have a question for you. It's kind of personal. Uh -oh. <laughs> yes, Clark. <laughs> Are you zipped up? <laughs> oh, no answer, huh? So, <laughs> in the outtakes, is actually kind of funny. Diane, your sister, at the very end said, oh my God, my zipper's been down this entire time. <laughs> I was like, oh no. So that's in the blooper reel. Runs in the family. So Robert, you signed my book in 1972. Oh my God. And you said to Joanne, have a good life. Will you sign it again today? Sure. I, oh I, my God, I love to. Yeah, I, those are selling on Do eBay for like $75 now. <laughs> Yes, and I saw you in Union Square okay. in the 1970s when I used to have lunch there and just absolutely loved you then. Uh, thank you so much for making this film. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Here we go. Question right here. I kind of wanted to say what she said. Because the first time I saw you was 1971-72 in Union Square. And I would sit there and I had to plan my exit so you wouldn't mime me. <laughs> but later, I met my husband in San Francisco. We moved to San Diego. And then we saw you at SeaWorld doing your act before the SEAL show. What? And then we came to Sedona and bought some of your artwork. We have followed you all over. So I'm just wondering, where is your next move so we can start packing? <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, are you, uh, your next move, what is your next? Where, well, first of all, I'm gonna make my way back to the balcony. Where can they find your art currently, Robert? I know you're Robert. Well, oh, my God. art is at www.robertshields.com, but my gallery, I'm partners with Michael Baird, and I do the art, and he does the rocks at the Sedona. It's actually in Cottonwood. It's called uh, Old Town Rocks Presents Robert Shields. It's 4,000 square feet of beautiful gemstones. He's an amazing collector, and... He sells them, and all my art's in there, all my paintings and everything. And then I'm also in Art Mart, 
right here. I'll be there tomorrow. And I, I love those guys. They are so good to me. And we do great business together. And I'm in a place called Peace Place. It's right near Elote. That's owned by Michael Baird, too. And also, I'm in Talakapaki at a wonderful store called Adorned. And um, she also has a store in the village. And I'm think I'm, I'm, and the, yeah, I think that's about it. Also out of your car sometimes, too. No. Yeah, yeah, and I, I work seven days a week. I make art every day, and I'm constantly coming up with new stuff. I just love making art. I live a very solitude life just doing that. <laughs> it's fun. Hi, Robert. I'm up here. All the way back up here. Oh, oh yeah. There we go. Here we oh, go. Oh, okay, here you first, go. First of all, to the, to the directors, the film is great. Thank you. Fantastic. Yes! Um, Robert, Robert, I'm, I've, since a little kid, I was a huge, huge fan of the late, great Jerry Lewis. Yes. And Jerry, as you well know, did Pratt Falls his entire life, his career, and he actually had like serious injuries, back issues, took pain medication. When I'm watching this film and I'm seeing all the falls that you were doing, I really wanted to know, like, what kind of, did you ever have any serious injuries? What's going on? Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> it's all there, baby. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I play, I play on an over-65 baseball team in uh, Scottsdale that needs a catcher. Can you? Uh, <laughs> 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 now, I was very lucky to be, when I met Lorene, she wasn't just a dancer. She was a dancer's dancer. She was Peter Gennaro's partner. She was Bob Fosse's favorite. She was in all his films. She is an amazing piece of work as a dancer. Ann Miller considered her also one of the greatest tap dancers. Gene Kelly was a very good friend of ours, and he said, there's only two tap dancers in the female realm, Lorene and Eleanor Powell. And uh, she trained my ass, because I was so, I never took any, you know, I just kind of come up with shit. She goes, hey, look. She'd go, hey, buddy, come here, come here. Okay, come here. I'm gonna show you a plie. You're gonna have to start developing your legs. You know, and she trained me in, in dance and warm up, and she was a drill sergeant. I trained her in mime, but she trained me in dance, how to take a fall, how to do this, how to do that, how to do that, not, how not to get hurt. When we used to do our stage show, I would wrap my knees, wrap my ankles, wrap my wrists, because we weren't really mimes, we were physical combat artists. And it was going to the gladiators. We would, before a show, we'd look at each other and instead of a lot of performers would pray and all this, we'd just go, let's go fucking kill them. <laughs> you know, just let's go get them. And, and that's what we did. We attacked the audience with our, scale, with our skills. And I was taught by her, so I never got hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about the profanity. We're an indie fender filled crowd. We can handle that. Okay, okay. Um, I want Mark and Christine, this is for you. How did you, I know you, you gave an acknowledgement at the end for all the archival footage and things. How, what kind of a process was that to dig all of this up and put together, and, and, and then how many hours did you end up with that you edited down to the 87 minutes we have? There, we've got uh, 18 terabytes of footage 18 terabytes of footage that, and that was the hardest part is to cut this down and figure out. But that little last bit, Steve Binder, who was, the, you saw him in the film, and, uh, but anyways, in his garage in Oxnard, he had all of that material on a shelf. His wife was thrilled that we cleaned that garage out. <laughs> <laughs> but it was there for 40, about 43, 44 years. And we thought, oh, these films are gonna be just deteriorated, but we brought them to a place, they cleaned them, and they transferred them to ultra, ultra high def, and just, we were blown away. So that was kind of neat. But the research itself on some of the things in terms of finding some of the footage, finding the people, you know, Gary Marble, the, the policeman that we had, 
Um, even I'm Amy, trying to think. Amy there was, was hard to find. All of a sudden, we found her, and it's just like everyone's gone. You know, it was '70s. They've all gone some other place. <laughs> so. So it was just kind of fun and amazing. It was like detective work some of the time, and right. that made it a lot of fun, but maddening as maddening. well. But yeah, that's uh, we would tag team. Yeah. You know, he'd try something, I go, okay, I'll take over and do it from a different angle. Yeah. But it was fun. It took a while, but it was fun. <laughs> Robert. Um, <clears throat> Robert got my, yeah, of yes, course. Yes, sir. Um, my, for my son back in St. Louis, who is a great fan of yours and follows you on Facebook, I wanted to ask, when will this film be streamed? Are there any distributors out here right now? We would uh, love to talk to you in the lobby. And uh, <laughs> so hopefully soon. Yeah. We, we hope. Yeah, and, so and this is the first screening ever. The most people that have seen this is about 11 people until tonight. So uh, thank and, you. Thank you. And I want to say I'm quite proud of my role in this because yes. I forced them to finish the film for this film festival. <laughs> They were, we've been talking for, well, for 10 years practically yeah. yes. about this. And, and I said, when are you ever going to have this film done? When are you going to have this film? And he, he sent me a rough cut, wasn't it? Yep. In fall? But it was, I, mean, I, I got it to you on Halloween. Yeah. So it was November 1st because that was your deadline. And I'm like, this isn't done, but it's close. And Pat's go, keep going. <laughs> keep going. And he did it. Oh. And he got the film done. And wasn't it fantastic? <laughs> so... Before we pull on our special guest, I want to tell you a Robert Shields story. Oh, boy. <laughs> because I wish Mark would have asked me to be in the film, because they're all singing Robert's praises and singing Robert's praises. I wanted to come on and say, Robert Shields is a giant pain in the ass. <laughs> you remember this probably, Robert. I'm not going to watch you while I'm telling this story. So uh, you know the balloon bit, right? The red balloon? I wasn't going to tell this, but since you had that in the film. So... Um, Back in the late 90s, I was not doing this job yet. I was on the board of the Sedona Arts Festival, and Robert was a friend of mine, so probably right around the time that picture of my son was taken, I said, hey, will you come and do a benefit for the Sedona Arts Festival? And at that time, this building was half this size. You came in at a door right there. The stage was much smaller, 243-seat auditorium. Yep. Um, we had our big donors. We sold tickets and stuff, and sold out a Sunday afternoon performance of Robert Shields. What the audience didn't know is he was going to surprise us. Lorene was still alive, so we were surprising them with Lord Yarnell joining him. I was the only one in on the bit. So we're rehearsing on a Saturday. Now, I'm much better at this now that I've been doing the film festival. I did not know how to do an event. I did not know what a performer needed. I didn't know what a tech writer was. So I didn't know there were special needs these people have, <laughs> especially when they're a mime and they're kind of special needs anyway. But... <laughs> So we're rehearsing. It's Saturday afternoon at 4 o'clock. The show is Sunday at 1 o'clock in the theater. Yarnell is backstage with me. He's shouting orders to the, the people, telling about this light, that light, the sound, this kind of thing. And I'm just, I had never seen anybody do that and all this kind of stuff. And I'm watching him, and, L and I'm like freaking out. Lorene could see my face, and she goes, yeah, Pat, he's a giant pain in the ass, which is, which is why we're not married anymore, but I love him so much. And... <laughs> Wait until you see the show he does for you tomorrow. You're going to be blown away. You just got to put up with this shit until you get to that point. <laughs> so I really wasn't quite sure what she was talking about. So after the rehearsal, he goes, okay, so where's my helium tank? I said, what are you talking about? He goes, I need a helium tank for the bit. I said, I, you didn't ask for a helium tank. We got to have a helium tank. It's, it's now 5.30 on a Saturday. Sedona doesn't sell helium tanks. And... Back then, in the late 90s, they didn't sell those little ones at Walmart and stuff that you can now get for a birthday party. I'm like, where the fuck am I going to find a helium tank? <laughs> I'm literally like, okay, Mr. Shields, I'll get this taken care of. I am calling everyone I know. Nothing I can find in Codwin. Finally, I got through on a home number of a rental place in Flagstaff. They said, we are closed on Sunday. I almost was in tears on the phone. And I said, I need a helium tank, and I need it really bad, or this act is not going to go off. I get, they said, I will, we'll meet you at our store at 10 o'clock Sunday. I schlepped this big, giant helium tank. <laughs> I've got it backstage. They're getting ready in their dressing room. The audience is filling up. I'm thinking, well, what does he need that for? I thought there'd be a thousand balloons out here. Like, what did he need to get a helium tank for? 
Oh gosh. He comes out. They do a bit. They do their bits. All this kind of thing. The audience goes crazy because Lorene Yarnell is there. He goes to do the balloon bit. He grabs the red balloon and goes. <laughs> See, I could be a mime. <laughs> He goes out and does the balloon bit. All that stuff like that. Very good. It floats up to the ceiling. I said, you made me get a helium tank for one fucking balloon. <laughs> so Robert Shields is not quite the nice guy everybody says he is. But he did redeem himself. So I'd like to think I could do a pretty good introduction in front of an audience. I've learned over the last 20 years. That day, I felt... I had given him the most glowing, most wonderful introduction. So he gets out there, and I go out there and said, ladies and gentlemen, we're so happy to have you here. Robert Shields has agreed to do this performance for us as a benefit of the Sedona Arts Festival. I'm so honored. He's a dear friend, blah, 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 blah. And I said, I used to grow up watching Shields and Yarnell on the Donnie and Marie show. And don't you remember that? The audience went crazy, and they clap, 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 clap. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Robert Shields. He does his show. He does the red balloon bit. He takes his bow. He comes off stage, and he goes, if you ever introduce me again, we were never on the Donnie and Marie show. <laughs> that was Donnie and Marie spoofing us, so don't ever use that line again. Oh, my God. That's right. I found I'm that. so sorry. I still love you, baby. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our special guest joining us from Chicago, Mr. Tony Orlando. Hello, Robert. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Orlando. Hello, Robert. <laughs> Tony, gosh, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming. <laughs> well, it's an honor. And uh, I'd like to tell the audience that... Uh, very few people in our business define genius. Jerry Lewis was one for sure, and your director just mentioned that. Chaplin was the other. I've just mentioned that. And you're right in that same category. You, you are everything they were and more. And Shields and Yarnell will always be remembered as a, a, the definition of mime, entertainment, Theater, acting, comedy, all the components that make for great actors and great theater. I was honored and privileged to share the stage with you in Vegas, Robert. Oh, thank you so much, Tony. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for taking a chance on us. I mean, you walked a tightrope for us, and if you <laughs> fell out, it would have been a horrible disaster. And thank God... We, we pulled through, but my God, you gave us an opportunity that opened the door for many, many years of, of love. It was easy. Thank it you. was easy. And you know, Robert, I don't know if you and the audience, uh, I've never shared this story in all these years. I'm enjoying my 64th year in show business. Wow. I've been, I would have been happy with 68 days. Uh, you look great. But the truth is, Robert, Thank you. The truth is, I got a tape from a guy named Richard Broder. Dick Broder was our manager. And the tape was of two people outdoors. I think it was in some park somewhere in San Francisco. And you were doing mine. And I was blown away. Now, everybody in the audience, imagine this. Tony Orlando and Dawn in 1973, 74, 75 had a very big, big television show. 36 million people watched every week. Of course, there was no cable. There was just three networks. And we were very hot at that time. We hit records. So I'm trying to set the table that we're working at the Riviera Hotel. And I see this tape of Shields and Yarnell. And I say to Dick Broder, I would like to share the stage with them and have them open for us at the Riviera hotel so Dick said well how do we go about that I said let me go to, uh, to Ed Torres at the hotel and play him this tape and convince him that this would be the best newest most creative act in all of Vegas so I walk into his office with your tape and I play it for him and he does this to me How 
wrong is there at? I said, well, they'll do about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. So they don't speak for 20 minutes and 25 minutes? No. So you want to bring an act into Las Vegas, have a, an act come on stage, doesn't sing and doesn't speak for 20 minutes before you come on. I said, yes. I said, I'm going to tell you what. You pay him. I said, me pay him? Now understand, everybody, listen very careful. This is not a bragging moment. This is a definition of what, how hot we were back then in the 70s. We were paying $175,000 a week. And at that time, you worked three weeks at a time, right, Robert? Not just weekends. So I could certainly afford to pay Shields and Yarnell. They didn't want to pay. So I pay. I said, okay, make the check out for me, whatever they want. Comes opening night. Shields and Yarnell make their debut in Las Vegas. The, the, the Jerry Lewis, the chaplain esque the genius, hits the stage. And I'm in my dressing room. And Robert, as you know, you could hear what's coming from the stage in my dressing room, and yours too. And here's all I heard was laughter, laughter, bam. It was, like, it was like listening the pins come down from a bowling alley, one strike after the next, one strike for 20 straight minutes, bam, bam, bam. My door opens up, Robert. It's Ed Torres, and he goes, I'll pay him. <laughs> Wow. You had blown the complete city away. And ladies and gentlemen sitting in this theater, trust me when I tell you, they became the hottest act, not only in Las Vegas from then on, but on television and around the world. I can honestly say I brag with pride that I had something to do with bringing your genius, Marie's genius, to Vegas and to people around the world. It's one of the greatest things I've ever been part of. Oh, totally. I love you. I'm so proud of this film. Oh. I hope it comes out and everyone can see it. And it will do the same thing. What you did in, in Vegas, the reaction of that audience, that time for these two young, incredible, mime, beautiful artists up there, great acting. When the world sees this tape again, they will understand what defines genius. Congratulations. The best of luck to you. The best of luck to your producers. The best of luck to your director. And believe me, I want to be there for that red carpet night. I cannot wait. Bravo. Beautiful job. Congratulations. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. Thank you so much for joining us from Chicago. Thank you so thank much you for being so much, here. Thank friend. you, thank you, thank you. I love you so much. Thank you so, so much. God bless you. And thank you all so Tony much. Tony Orlando. <laughs> Give it up. Yep, Tony Orlando. Wow. The big, yeah. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> thank you all so much for coming. Robert and Christine and Mark will be out in the lobby to shake hands, say hello, answer some more questions. Make sure you vote. Tear through that ballot. One to five. Five being best. This gets counted for our Audience Choice Award. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for coming. Gosh. That was awesome. Thank you very much.